Well, Mike Mack, we have one of the premier teams uh, playing tonight with Glen Oaks. They bring a 20-3 and overall record, 11-1 in the conference. And uh, you can see by that lineup, they got size, they got height, they got strength. Uh, and they got all kinds of different color shoes on. They're quite uh, yeah. a flashy uh, team, but hey, you got 20 wins out of 23. Why not? Why not have the uh, attractive shoes? So Community College is going to have to play well. They got a good bunch of athletes who are quick. They shoot the three. They're going to have to play one of their better games to stay with this team. This will be an up and down game. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be fast, fast, fast. Both teams have a couple of 6 5 kits, about the biggest. Glen Oaks won the first meeting earlier this year, 91 to 83, and uh, win 20 games is a lot. Yeah. Said they had one kid ineligible that's moved up and got a promotion. He's taking film this game. Okay. <laughs> Maybe he's getting a <laughs> film directorship intern. Kylon Jones misses that jump shot. Two to zip. Muskegon will fire from any range, and they uh, they certainly don't need a 35-second uh, shot clock. They can get by with about a 15. Yeah, right. Ooh. John Leonard drove in from OV, and, boy, he just got, I don't know, he got fouled or slipped. And well, I, I, the sound of his body hitting the floor. Yeah, it sounded like he broke the boards yes. there. Uh, he's going to shoot two if he can find a free throw line. He, he's got to <laughs> he's got to get the cobwebs out of his head on that one. John Leonard, six five freshman from Orchard View High School, bank that one right in. Yes. Mix them both. This game's going to be in the 90s, I would assume. Oh, yeah. They're, they're going to take enough shots to get in the 90s, Mike. I'm going to have a headache probably going back and forth to the stiff neck here. 14 scores, Gene Young. Lee Gardner, the third yeah. from uh, Kalamazoo Central High School. Falls on uh, 35. You know, there's six sophomores on this team, and that's a tribute to the coach and the college, that kids right. can get through and do college work for two years, and uh, uh, I commend the coach and the school for that. Right, obviously they have a good basketball program. They're in yeah. first place in the yeah. league with 20, you know, 20 wins is a good season yeah. in community college basketball. There's a lot of, a lot of parity and yeah. a lot of new faces. Ooh, that's a nice pass. Yeah. Well, if they're unselfish, the way they run, they could, like you said, get right. in the 90s. Todd Gearley is our new principal, I guess, of Muskegon Catholic. Yes. Calls a foul, one of many he'll probably call. And 21 for the Jayhawks to Juan Jones. A 175-pound, six-foot sophomore from Chicago, Illinois, and from well, Lansing my, Eastern. How do you go to? How do you live in Chicago? <laughs> go to Lansing <laughs> Eastern. He commuted. <laughs> you know, Ty Miller, one of the other referees. Half of it. One of the f most interesting, spectacular basketball players at Fremont and at Ferris. He was a joy to watch. He was a heck of a player. What yeah. happened to his hair? <laughs> he's still thin, he can still run, and he's a good official, too. Oh, he's an excellent official. Offensive rebound by the uh, Vikings, knocked it off the knee. It's going to be out of bounds for the Jayhawks. 6 to 4 with 18 minutes, 15 seconds to go in the first half. This will be a totally opposite of the girls' game. This yes. is going to be wheel and deal them and run and gun and uh, dunks and rebounds. Oh, yeah. and well, we'll get some spectacular dunks. From uh, even some players uh, shaved below six foot. I watched uh, 
Mr. Trevor, the Big Reds have a couple breakaway duds uh, recently, and uh, boy, does he elevate. Well, he sure can. He's a heck of a player. Heck of an athlete. You know, Gene Young's going to come back to community college. You know, I played in the first game out here, Bartels Road Gymnasium, which if you don't know it, is named after Rudy Bartels, who coached here many years. I played here his last couple of years. Oh, yeah. no, in fact, his last year, yeah. before he was just too sick to uh, yeah. continue on, he coached for many, many years here, and that's what the uh, gymnasium's appropriately named after. Well, Good, great guy. How about the connection? You played the first game. I coached two games here. Did you really? When Gene oh. Vischer went out to interview at Weber State, uh, and uh, don't ask me my record, but I had Ken Van Dyke and... Uh, that gang, a few kids from Christian, and uh, well, we you had to be two and zero oh, then. We played at Steel. We okay. played at Steel. Yeah. I was here in uh, 67, 68, 69 in there. Well, I came back a couple of times, but I was a few <laughs> few credits short. I was here the same time. Uh, Chris Taylor, the all yeah. all American wrestler yeah. who died, an Olympic wrestler, was a national champ, weighed about 390 pounds. And, Used to take him out the dollhouse court where he lived up yeah. in White House. My car would tip to one side when he got <laughs> in. Well, was another foul. Uh, he only caught a foul at 14. Lee Gardner the third, and uh, it's going to be out of bounds. That's already the community college is having uh, trouble with their quickness, yes. and uh, it's already their 15 foul. It's still 17 minutes to go yeah. in the half, and we won't have any trouble getting to the one and one in here. Yeah. Well, not only is uh, uh, Glen Oaks has some height, but they're, they're physical. They got big muscle definition, and uh, uh, we'll keep it right here for the first time out. And uh, you know, we could spend a lot of time just talking about the officials. Not only is Todd Gerling a uh, high school principal at Muskegon Catholic, he's a uh, official, head official uh, in. Uh, Big Ten Conference or NCAA. I think he does both. And um, he's done a lot of bowl games and one of the real nice people of the world. Uh, and of course, we can't admit Randy Hubber. Uh, he's uh, one of the fine. We got a crew of officials here that. Uh, yeah, the experienced crew. And you and, know, they're yeah. all uh, pretty much local guys. Yes, they don't have to drive. Uh, the young lady uh, worked the girls game came from DeWitt, which is uh, outside of Lansing. That's a. Uh, 200 mile round trip. Yeah. Ty Miller still is a Fremont resident and uh, Ryan is from Sparta and Todd lives in Mon Norton Shores. So there's a long bomb right there by number uh, 21 for the Jayhawks. They call him T. Jones. He's our commuter from Chicago, Illinois, <laughs> attend Lansing Eastern. Clon Oaks has nice ball movement so far. They're, they're, they're very unselfish, and they're sharing the ball and uh, hitting the open man. And there's a three-pointer by 22 D. Roberts, the 6'2 uh, freshman from Waverly High School in Lansing. Would you like to tell our viewing audience where number 10 is from? Number 10 for, uh, from uh, yeah, Glen Oaks. Siberia, Siberia? Yep. How can they play basketball there? It's 45 <laughs> degree below zero. How's he commute from there to Lowell High School or to Hall High School? Well, he must have been an exchange student in state. Yes. I don't know. Ant Ant Arctic. <laughs> Latin very appropriate. They had a thing on Siberia in the uh, Olympics the other night. 45 degrees below zero. He probably thinks it's in heaven here when yeah. it's five. Good ball movement by the Jayhawks. Nice scoop shot. Scoop shot by big Jake yeah. Anderson, a 6'4 yeah. sophomore from Grant. Jake Anderson has, has had some good games. He's an offensive, uh, when he's on, he can, uh, everything he throws up goes in. Chase Case Ball is getting ready to come in. A 6 3 freshman from Montague. He's going to come in and take uh, T. Connor's place. 
Dylan Connor from uh, Chicago. We got what, four guys from Chicago yes. on this team? Kenwood, Kenwood High School out of Chicago. We must have a recruiter in that area of Chicago. Well, one of the things that's very interesting is we only have one kid from Muskegon on the whole team. Yeah. And that's John Leonard out of Orchard View. A turnover by uh, the Vikings as uh, Eric Nix whipped that one. Intended to go to the low post to Starks and uh, threw a little too hard. Nine to nine, Gene Young, 15 minutes to go in the first half. Shot by T. Jones. Nice three-point shot. Muskegon loves the three, and when they're hitting it, uh, they can shoot. Boy, nice spin. Nice move. drive right. by. Uh, yeah, that's a big Angelo time. Angelo Griffiths. Move. Nice six-five from Kalamazoo Central High School, which is a great basketball program. Oh, just dropped in. Jake Anderson. Nice jump shot, got a good bounce and dropped in. I get a headache at looking out at all the different color shoes. <laughs> That's what I said in the pregame. Yeah. I said, this team uh, is, uh, well, uh, both teams. There's no, yeah. there's no team shoe. That's quite obvious. Yeah, and I, I like I like a team shoe. Yes. It makes the uniform look yeah. better. Yeah. This looks like, a, I'm not sure what it looks like. Yeah. Uh, maybe they're not a Nike school yet, like yeah. Muskegon. <laughs> Muskegon's I got never have the same pair on every time I see them. Well, I got a never, new pair. Never have the same uniform on. No. Nice shot by uh, number 20, Kevin Gardner. That Kevin Gardner, 5'10", from uh, another kid from Kalamazoo yeah. Central. They have uh, three players on the roster for Glen yes. Oaks from Kalamazoo Central. Well, it's, it's, uh, they have a lot of basketball players, year in and year out. They do. No lean years at Kalamazoo Central. No. <clears throat> That was not a shot. That's a lost ball That's there. A turnover by Hatter. He just lost it. I think he wanted to drive in and shoot it. I like their unselfishness. I do too. Nice put back. Yeah. Shot and miss and a put back by uh, 32 Angelo Griffiths, uh, uh, the 6 er from uh, Kalamazoo Central High School. There's another long bomb by Maurice Hatter. From Holland, West Ottawa. Yep, Hatter's a great three-point shooter. The rebound, uh, Angelus Griffiths got that. Jayhawks are a little, has a, a, a size and strength disadvantage tonight. Yeah. Uh, Glen Oaks isn't huge, but they go uh, they go six five, six six, and they're well, the, the meaty kid, size. There. Yeah, the kid shooting the free throw at six five weighs two hundred and twenty five pounds. Right. That's, al more, that's almost a linebacker size. Right, it is. Yeah, they're a little more. They appear a little more athletic than uh, mm. community college. That's probably why they're twenty and three. Yes, and but the Jayhawks are right there, seventeen seventeen, twelve fifty to go and a half. And he makes the three-pointer. Angelo Griffiths, nice ball player. The, uh, Glen Oaks is in a 1-2-2 uh, two, two zone now, Gene. Switch defense a little bit and make the Jayhawks shoot outside. And they will. And they will. One that's in and out by T. Jones. Connor Bradley, six foot, 175 pound freshman from the Wego, enters the game for MCC. Wide open three, who we on didn't get it.
They're going to have a foul on Community College. Don Muskegon is uh, Lee Gardner the third. Worked the ball under and went up and got knocked around a little bit. It's uh, Community College is fourth team. And Gardner will go to the line to shoot two as they lead uh, 11 1. 11 30 to play here in the first half. And uh, already uh, we're getting close to the one on one with four on Muskegon and six on. Uh, Glen Oaks. Did we get one on one in the whole game with the women's game, Mike? Uh, I think the second half. Okay. Uh, near the end, we did. But I'm not sure they shot a one on one. There were a couple two shot yeah. balls. Long bomb, nice shot. Uh, Chase, Case Bolt. A lot of young kid from uh, Montague. Montague. He's uh, he's a player and uh, just a freshman. Nice drive, nice yeah. penetration by Eric Nix. Nice, uh, nice shot. Or excuse me, no, that's not Nix. That's Gardner. Kayvon Gardner who just came in the game. Five ten, but he carries two hundred pounds on that five ten frame. He's another well built young man. Strong, strong, strong. Their official Ty Miller calls a hold on uh, Glen Oaks. And going to uh, Jayhawks will get the ball out of bounds. That's well, the seventh foul, I believe. They're going to go one and one here, but we'll see. Oh, I'm sorry. Community's got, uh, yeah, Glen Oaks. That's their 17th foul. So, Corinne uh, Connor will shoot uh, one and bonus. You missed the first, you don't get a second. No. 21 20, Glen Oaks. 10 minutes, 35 seconds, going to half. You know, sitting up high is, uh, and I haven't seen him this year, we've seen him for several years, is Paul Combs and his group. He brings three or four guys, and they enjoy. Uh, and uh, I saw Paul at the uh, Mona Shores Machine game. And, uh, he won 480 bucks on a 50 50 the other night. Oh, my goodness. I'm sure he gave it back to Mona Shores. Yeah, all right. <laughs> we give uh, Todd Gerland, just give the Glen Oak coach, uh, Steve Provock, yeah. a warning. Yeah. Yeah. She's been around a long time. He's a very experienced coach, and uh, I really enjoy watching him. He always brings a good team here to Muskegon. Yeah, I, I didn't know there was a warning. I guess apparently there's a warning yeah. before they tee him in college. Yeah. I, yes. I wasn't aware of that. Yes, yes. Anyhow, he got his warning. He wasn't happy about something. Boy, that's sick, 225. That's a great shot. That It's hard to guard that. He put... Dips in and then he's got that quick Called release. Called an offensive foul yeah. on him. And did he give him the basket? Did he count that? No, they had 24. Okay, no, okay. No offensive foul on uh, yeah. Angelo Griffiths. He took the shot away. Or the bucket away. Yeah. There's another long yeah. shot by uh, 21. T. Jones, yeah. two-pointer. Jones uh, can hit it. He's got a good jump shot. Got a hustle by the Vikings, a very aggressive physical team. Well, you're right about free throw shooting, Mike. Uh, we'll bring back the girls ref for this game. They, they're <laughs> calling uh, pretty tight to the vest so yeah. far as uh, Ant and Leonard picked up the foul and uh, 32, Angelo Griffiths going to the line for two, made the first one as they move ahead 25-22 with nine minutes, 16 seconds remaining in the first half. 
We're going to have to start saying the guy in blue shoes is the guy in green or purple yeah. shoes. Or, uh, hit some balls. Going to shoot a lot of fouls tonight, brother. I think uh, some of those shoes are bringing back chartreuse. Man, man. Happy for Rob uh, Rocknagel. I like the postseason or postgame interview. He's really proud of these kids. To play and win against a, a good team without your star player, the other kids really stepped up. Yeah, they did. Congratulations to the women's team. You bet. Congratulations to Rob and the girls. They, they did a nice job. Yes, they did. He's uh, a good fundamental coach. The kids uh, execute. They know what they're doing out there, and that's so critical. Boy, nice uh, tip by... Nice block by Anderson. Jake Anderson. Yep, very nice. Nice pass by uh, 14, Lee Gardner the third, but he was just too close to make that quick yeah. pass and a one off a Viking hand for the Jayhawks ball. 8.32 left in the first half. 26-22, the Vikings of Glen Oaks. Anderson with a nice drive, but can't get it to, uh, excuse me, John Leonard with a nice drive, couldn't get it to drop. And Oaks got good yeah. size. Yeah. They got pretty good size and pretty good strength and uh, got the ball in Lee Gardner the third and he muscled it in for a 28-22 lead. Mike, he's 6'3", 205 pounds, as I yeah. mentioned several times. These kids, uh, they're playing three or four out there, 200 pounds plus. Haven't mentioned 44 much, uh, Starks. He's a 6'7", 205 pound freshman out of Decatur High School in Indianapolis, Indiana. Yeah, big kid. Connor Bradley comes back in for uh, John Leonard. As uh, Hatter goes to the line for a one and bonus. That's twice that the Jayhawks yeah. missed the front yeah. end of one and one. Got to make these charity. They're not going to get a lot of opportunities, yeah. and you got to take advantage of those free throws. They're called free. That's right. It cost them four points. They don't make them. Going to be another foul on the Jayhawks. They're just having trouble with their strength. Yes. Not so much their size as just their strength, and uh, it's going to be a foul. on the Jayhawks and uh, Lee Guard to the third will go back to the line again for this will be a one and bonus nine fouls or excuse me seven fouls on uh, Muskegon Community College and he gets the first I'm not sure they missed a free throw I don't think they have that's probably mm -hmm. four or five in a row I'd well, emphasize uh, uh, they they got a 195 pounder on the floor he's the lightest player on the Viking team, the rest of them are 205 to 225. And he hits them both. They have their largest lead of the game, Gene, 30 to 22, with 725 remaining in the opening half. Big one. Uh, they just can't hit well, one. Can't. As, uh, Connor Bradley missed that one. They're going to get a turnover here as Bradley intercepts it. Costly turnover. Yeah, turnover. <laughs> Strong move, James. Yeah. Jayhawks knocked it away. Yeah. Physical. Nice, nice, drive. nice drive by Jake Anderson. Nice move. Fake left, drove right. You no, know, Anderson good. has earned more playing time as the season's progressed, Mike. He's uh, he's a very active player. Plays with a lot of heart. Turnover. 
Now this possession right here, if they can get a two or if they get, they get some points, it puts them right back in this ball game. Oh, yeah. 6.22 left here in the first half. Community College coaching staff plays a lot of kids. All goes out of bounds as uh, Anderson missed that jump shot. That's going to be a f call that foul on. Uh, I'm not sure. I think he called it on 24. Five from uh, Muskegon, Riley, yeah. Angeline, from Sault Ste. Marie. Yeah. Our uh, camera person is Stephanie Hoover. Stephanie, give us five. Go put up your hand and just uh, wave to the crowd. Then uh, Rod Van Norkwick is the director and has trained these kids and put together a heck of a crew. And uh, they telecast a lot of Muskegon Community College events and even community events. They missed the first uh, front end of the one and one. That's the first one they've missed. But they still lead 30 to 24. That's Glen Oaks Community College. Good ball moving by the Jayhawks here. And uh, he can't convert on that three, but he follows his shot. And good uh, hustle good by, hustle. by Anderson again. 51, the proud graduate of a Grant High School, a sophomore. John, uh, uh, Mike, uh, Community College doing a better job on the boards, limiting the one shot. That's a real key. Yeah, it sure helps. And they're rebounding in twos and threes, not standing around defensively. Comes a three on one for the Vikings and they're gonna get a dunk off of this. Yep. Almost a dunk. Yeah. And it'll be a timeout by the Jayhawks. 32-26. Yeah, we're gonna take a break. We'll be back. Yeah. Back to action. 430 left here in the first half. The 20 and 3 Glen Oaks, 32, the Jayhawks, 26. A nice turnaround by Jake Anderson. I tell you, he's having a 13 heck of, footer. He's having a heck of a game, Mike Mack. He is. Uh, right back within four, 32-28. Coming out of the timeout with a nice bucket. Nice move and a nice drive by Lee, Lee Gardner the third. 34-28 Vikings. Vikings now are back in a 2-3 zone. See how the Jayhawks attack it. Had her pressing uh, that. Uh, yeah, he forced that one. Five eight hundred and forty pound frame doesn't belong in there. Mike. No, he forced that one. Out. That hurt him. They got away with it. Just Vikings missed, and there's a nice drive. And he had her, couldn't get it again. Well, we're going to give uh, Lee Gardner the bucket. Yeah. Two turnovers Community College got in the last two possessions, mm -hmm. and then the Vikings come down and score. So that's mm -hmm. a six-point swing. And Gardner's going to the line for a... Uh, one shot yep. to complete the three-point play. Yeah. Tight ball game, a three-point just moves them out a little more comfortable, 37-28. We're down to 3.05 left here in the first period. 
Jayhawks need a couple threes before half to get back in this ball game. There's one. There's one of them, T. Jones. Jones and Hatter, if you give them the room, that uh, can hit the three, but so far, they've been uh, pretty well guarded tonight. Boy, good, good defense by Anderson. He's having a heck of a ball game. Thirty-seven, thirty-one. 31 Glen Oaks Vikings. Jayhawks trying to get back a little closer. There's a three. Oh, he just oh. missed it. It's not that they're not trying. They're putting that ball up. Yes. They're just not shooting a great percentage. There's our friend from uh, Belgrade, Siberia, Howell <laughs> High School. Alexander Antic, A-N-T-I-C. 6'4", 195, sophomore. I think I'd like to interview him about things, all, all, what he does in Siberia. I saw those horses on TV. They they say they can stand the cold. I get cold just watching them. Oh, man. Chase Caseball makes the first one to move them within five. This will cut the lead to four with just a little over two minutes to go and a half. Both teams are in a double bonus now the last two minutes and 10 seconds of the first half. And Antic is going to draw a Two shot foul, he'll go to the line. And that's the 10th team foul, even though that was in the shack to sh act of shooting. If it wasn't, they'd still get two right. shots because we got the 10 uh, foul rule. And that's the third foul on uh, Chase Caseball from Montague. Yeah. He hadn't played Antic that many. makes the first one. Hadn't played that many minutes, he's coming out. Going in as uh, 33. I'm sorry, 31. Bradley. The way some of these junior colleges recruit, maybe a boy from Siberia is on a on a visa or something just for the <laughs> basketball season. Have to check his eligibility. <laughs> Thirty-eight, thirty-three. Gene Young, they can get a bucket here. They can yeah. try to creep a little closer with just a yeah. uh, minute forty left in the half. You can't say community uh, college isn't aggressive. They play hard. They play real hard. You know they're bringing that zone out. They're kind of denying that three-point shot. Hat is a good three-point shooter if he, if he gets time to set. Yeah, they, you're right. They've taken it out. They're going to have to make a long three-pointer. Well, nice move. move. Yep. Nice move by Gardner. Lee Gardner's had a nice first half. Yep. Six, nice three, player. 205, Kalamazoo Central, a basketball-rich high school. There they go. Nice shot by John Leonard. Yep. Uh, cut it to hanging. five. Yep. One more stop and one more basket, and uh, you got to be happy with them. We're going to call an offensive foul on uh, forty-four for uh, Lynn Oaks. Jason Stark came in the game from Indianapolis, so uh, John Leonard will go to the line, shoot two shots. It was forty-four point four left in the first half. Makes the first, we'll get another one, 40-36. Got it to three. Yeah. 
Back in the ball game, Michael. Let's get a stop here. Heck, let's tie it up at halftime. Come on, Jayhawks, make a stop. One shot, coach is calling for one shot. See, they're coming way out uh, and keeping uh, Hatter and Jones from shooting at three. They've been well scouted. Actually in a man-to-man now. A terrible foul by uh, yeah. Gardner. Why do you, coach is saying, why did he do that? Yeah, they might as well make them make it. They're playing pretty good defense. Yeah. Now uh, Hatter will go to the line and get the double bonus to uh, good cut it to one if he can make them both. Ross Reckoning go home, I'm sure, watching the game on TV or uh, better yet, this is probably his bedtime. Probably watching yeah, where is he tonight? Well, they uh, I think they were babysitting, I think. Bring them all here, he didn't babysit. Yeah. They have them all here at the game, Feet, take them out to dinner. Yeah. Long bomb, oh, oh nice boy. shot by Angelo Griffith. You know, he's a player. He's yeah, got, he's a player. He's got great size. 43-39, Gene Young, the first half, Glen Oaks. We're at halftime, and we're going to take a little break, and then uh, Mike Mack's going to be talking to Jimmy Booth to start the second half to see what they have to do to win this game. We'll be back. Thank you very much. Halftime, Jimmy, uh, what'd you talk about at halftime? How you gonna how you going to win this game? I think you played well. This is a very good basketball team. It is. Uh, there's a reason why they're uh, uh, first in our league. Mm-hmm. Um, we basically talked about we just, you know, inevitably just got to shoot the ball better. Uh, 11 or 33 just yeah. isn't good enough against this good of a team. Um, and then we just can't give up uh, uh, eight offensive rebounds and allow them to rebound us by 10. So we addressed the uh, uh, addressed some offensive adjustments and uh, addressed the rebounds as well. But uh, we definitely complimented them on their uh, on their ability not to turn the ball over. Three turnovers and a half is. Yeah. Uh, at any level is is amazing. So we we're definitely pleased with that aspect. You know, uh, they go out on the zone, which keeps your smaller guards from shooting at three. And you know, they if they get hot, they they're pretty good. But uh, they really stretch their zone. And there's Mike and I commented several times in the first half. They're a physical. Uh, they're 205, 220 pounds. You know, and sometimes that strength uh, gets them the rebound or gets them the shot. Yeah, we uh, and we addressed that. I mean, you know, I told our guys, you know, you better be ready for a physical game yes. because, I mean, even their guards, like you said, are are, are not, are, you know, not six foot, one hundred and seventy, more like yeah. six two, two hundred and five yes. pounds. So, um, and I think that you know, uh, gotten our guys way a little bit, you know, for their guys shooting the ball, um, having a bigger guard, a longer guard, yeah, uh, you know, make your rush a shot a little bit. But yeah. we we address we address our offense and if they go back to their zone and their man, and uh, you know, I think we'll shoot the ball better in the second half. Good. Well, have a good second half, and uh, this would be a great victory on home court. You're playing a very, very good basketball team. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. Well, Mike Mack, we we had a very physical first half, a very good, I thought Community College played very well. And uh, your comments, what do they got to do to win this second half in this ball game? Well, I think they're going to have to shoot a little bit better. Uh, First half. They were 11 out of 33 for 33 percent, and uh, Glen Oaks was 16 to 32 yeah. for 50 percent. So they have to pick that up. Yeah. And uh, Glen Oaks made five more baskets, and they, even though they're only down by four, uh, I think they're going to have to pick that up a little bit in the second half. Uh, maybe shoot to three a little better too. Okay. Al Connor, a uh, 6'4", 200 pound. Uh, Jayhawk uh, didn't uh, set out a lot. He picked up a couple quick fouls. Let's hope he can uh, get some more playing minutes in this second half. Well, they score the first basket with uh, Brian Lester scoring first for uh, who an offensive foul there. There's no question about yeah. that. Well, he wanted the baseline, and the uh, Viking played defense and uh, held his ground, and so it's a turnover, an offensive foul. 
Yeah, the Jayhawks are going to have to be careful here. They're going to have to shoot a lot better. Uh, 33% isn't going to cut it. No. Uh, the Glen Oaks is too good, and they're too quick, and they're too physical. they, they got to be careful. they got to play good defense and hustle, good hustle play uh, at that time by John Leonard. Well, they can't let it get it away. First three, four minutes of the second half, they got to stay with them, stay with them, stay with them. And let's see, it's going to be told uh, very soon if they can mount some type of attack to give this uh, highly ranked team a contest in the second half. Oh, nice move. Yeah, uh, very Gardner. nice move. Nice move. Uh, all of a sudden, they're up by eight. You got to be careful. Fouls on Eric Nix of uh, Glen Oaks. They hawk ball out of bounds. Eric's a big fella. His third, 25 yeah. third, he's coming out for a while. He also just received a tee on the way out. So they're going to not only get the ball out of bounds, they're going to get two free throws and then the ball out of bounds. So they'll cut this. Could be a four point or five point swing if he could hit both free throws and do something with the ball out of bounds. You know, if you could ring kids. That back. also counts as a, <laughs> another foul yeah, for yeah. him. So that gives him four. Yep. He just took himself right out of yep. this game till late. Yeah. Yeah. You can't wring their necks, but, boy, there's an incident you'd like to. Oh, yeah. And terrible. he's a competitor. I'm going to not say his name, but the kid plays hard, and he's oh, a yeah. Good competitor, player. yes. It's both free throws. Uh, T. Jones, and now the Jayhawks will have it out. And have a chance to nip two or maybe even three points off of this lead. They could get as close as three points on this one possession. Here. Instead, they throw up a bad shot and get nothing. He uh, might have got fouled on shooting a three, which would reward him with three free throws, Mike. Yep, he's going to get three. Uh, so Chase Caseball will go to the line for three shots. Anytime you foul a three-point shooter, they ought to automatically take you out of the game, make you <laughs> set five minutes. There's just no reason for it, no excuse for it. It's like fouling somebody at the other end of the court. Yeah. You know, they're yeah. not going to make that. They're not going to make an 80-foot shot. So don't foul. Three point, you get your hand up and make a good jump, and if he makes it, he makes it. Now, well, this uh, other successful free throw could bring him within four points, and he's got it. 18 17, plenty to play in the second half, just got started. Uh, there's Muskegon, two guys fighting over it, goes into a Viking and put back. Yep, and uh, Angelo Griffiths knocked it in. There's a three. Got a timeout. We're going to take a short timeout. We'll be right back. 17.45 yep. to go in the game, Gene Young. 49-46. Yep. Glen Oaks. Who has the ball? There's that six six rebounder. Boy, they, uh, they pass the ball. They're very unselfish, this team. Well, the Jayhawks are still very much in yes. it. They just, uh, they're sticking around. They're not, uh, 
burning him or anything. Good I rebound know. there by the Jayhawks, and he just fumbled it. Going to call a foul on uh, Glenn Oaks on D. Roberts. The Jayhawks going to go for the line for two on this one. Is uh, it'll be Jaren uh, Connor will go to the line shoot two. You know when nice. Hatter and Jones are moving down the floor, they're very very quick and they really create some new uh, and actually fast break basketball. But uh, you know you got to get the rebound, you got to stop the uh, offense uh, in order to get. <laughs> That transition into uh, your offense, but they're very, very quick. What's happened with the uh, Glen Oaks Vikings is they've spread that zone, and even their man-to-man -man is physical, where they've kept uh, those two little guards that are very good three-point shooters away from taking shots, uncontested. Makes the second one, so that pulls them yeah. in two. A little over 16 minutes left in the game. A lot of whistles, a lot of whistles. That's John Leonard's second personal. Jake Anderson on the bench with four. Loose ball to jump ball. It's going to remain, uh, don't turn it over to Community College. Ms. Kiggins going to get the ball this time, down by two. Jones uh, said, I'm going to pounce on this and grab it, and nobody's going to get it. See if the Jayhawks can get a bucket as uh, Maurice Marquise Hatter leads him down the floor. Made a nice penetration, yeah. just couldn't finish it. Nice pass. We're going to get a three-point play here. Yeah. Nice pass. Gardner he, finishes it with a layup, and yeah. he'll go to the line for a one. Six feet from the basket, and he dished it off and uh, resulted in a potential three-point play. you got to appreciate that much teamwork. Uh, right. These kids uh, are not, not selfish players. None of them. They all give the ball up when there's somebody in a better position. That's the way the game is supposed to be played. Mm -hmm. And they turn that pass into a three-point play. 52-47, Glen Oaks. The Jayhawks try to get a bucket here to close it. There's a long bomb, and he got fouled. <laughs> Three-point play or three-point shot by uh, T. Jones, and he was fouled by Glenn Oaks. Another bad foul. Now he's going to go to the line. Jones will go to the line for three, and the Jayhawks could cut the lead to two if he can hit this. And Ooh, and this is first. And our TV workers tonight, uh, headed up by Ron Van Norwick, Rod. Dylan Lewis, Neilan Bradley, Christian Burbick, and Stephanie Hoover. Thank you very, very much for bringing this telecast to what the technical work, the camera work. Appreciate it all. Good people. T. Jones misses two. He'll get one more chance here. It's 52 to 47. The Vikings of Glen Oaks. And he misses the third. He missed three straight free throws. Well, yeah. you don't see that often. No. So that costly foul did not hurt the Vikings. Boy, he was wide open. Wide open underneath. Yeah. And you Jayhawks know, that wide open, if you don't get the bucket, you're going to get a foul and yeah. some free throws. And that's already, uh, they, they got to stop that pass inside. Yeah. Just, Our uh, last telecast of the year will be next Wednesday, February 26th, with Jackson Community College uh, home with... Uh, the yeah, ladies at 5.30 and the men at uh, 7.30. 
Lee Gardner to the line for two. He made the first one, and the foul was on uh, Jake Anderson. That was his fourth. So he sets for going to set for a while with 15:20 to go in the game. 53, 54 now. 54 to 47 is they get, the Jayhawks got to really focus on what they're doing now. And, uh, every possession certainly counts here as we're moving into the 15 mark left in the game. There's a drive penetration. He just couldn't get it to fall, and uh, Jones couldn't get that one to go, and so Glen Oaks will have a shot to build up their lead. Now offensive re rebound. Nice block. Nice block by Leonard on that. Now Leonard's a nice little player from Archer's view. Okay? Nice jumping. It's going to be a foul on uh, 45, I believe. And I also believe a technical foul. And I'm not sure. It's going to be a technical on community. I'm not sure who he gave it to. I think he gave it to 45. I think he gave it to, to uh, Leonard. Yeah. Which would be two quick fouls. A personal foul and a technical, which count as two. I have no idea why he and was called on him. He he's wants to say, I don't know, but he's coming out. And they're going to get uh, two free throws, and Angelo Griffiths will get two, and he made the He's in a tight first game. We have two and technicals. Second. And now it'll be their ball out of bounds. It wasn't a shooting foul. No. It would have been a shooting foul. He would have got four. Yes. So it's now a nine-point lead for the Vikings with 14.50 no. to go in the second half. Costly errors. Costly errors. Mental mistakes, turnovers, miss opportunities kill you. Put it off his knee. It's going to be a Jayhawk ball. They need a bucket here, Gene. Now. Yes, they certainly do. Down 14, nine. 14 39. Lots of time to play. But you want to narrow the uh, gap? Mm. Oh. That was a nice drive by. 5'8, 140 pounds, and he took it to the right uh, against the guy much, much bigger. Sure did. I think he was a little angry there. And, yeah. you know, he took it in like he meant it. Yeah. That's what the Jayhawks need to do this final 14 minutes. Hatter from West Ottawa High School with the ball, number five. Jayhawks trying to set it up over this man-to-man uh, -man defense. And uh, Hatter drives again. This time he lost yeah. it, Gene. Yeah. They're going to get a dunk here probably yeah. as uh, Antic goes in. Alexander Antic. Makes a steal and a nice layup. So they're back down by nine. Good long tip. shot. Long shot by Leonard. Didn't get it. And Jayhawks fight for the rebound and I believe uh, number 20, Kayvon Gardner from the Vikings will get a uh, foul. Jayhawks take a timeout. So with 13-10 to go in the game, it's 58-49. We'll be back. Oaks. We'll be back. We're back. 13-10 left in this ball game. The Vikings of Glen Oaks, 58. The Jayhawks of Muskegon Community College, 49. Uh, Big possession for the uh, Jayhawks. They need uh, to narrow this gap. Had her good uh, at kind of pen penetrating, also the three. Good offensive rebound. Jayhawks just having trouble finishing. No, they, they, they just can't finish. They, they had three shots. Uh, uh, a little bit, uh, you know, there's, that's that size and strength of uh, Glen Oaks just kind of prevents them from uh, 
Just they can't just quite finish it yeah. as well as they'd like to. Yeah. There's a nice drive there by yeah. uh, number 12, yeah. uh, Upshaw. For They open their biggest gap now, 60 to 49, 11 point balls. Three no good by Jones. The Jayhawks are coming the other way. Nice loop, let's see what he calls here. He's gonna call block. As Jake Anderson drove in for a layup, it's gonna be a block on uh, Antics and uh, went, in, went in the basket a little bit and spun out. You'd love to have a three point play uh, to help you get back in this ball game, but uh, still have to make the uh, free throws. Yeah, he'll go to the line, shoot two. Nothing like getting back in the game with the whoops, uh, with the clock stop. <laughs> Riley uh, Angela is uh, Sioux St. Marie entering the game for the first time. Johnny Leonard comes out for a little break. I like I like uh, John. He does. Yeah, nice he plays job. hard. He's plays very hard. Nice. Yeah. And the Jayhawk Jake Anderson goes one for two. Nice try there, Gene. By uh, uncontested, Mike. Yeah, D. Roberts is. Nobody's got a hand in his no. face. Nobody's got a body in his path. They got a defense, got to tighten up, make, take that outside shot. They can't give him anything inside. It's just too, it's too easy for him. But I guess that's why they won 20 games in our first place in the yeah. league. There's a nice, nice shot by Jayhawks, T. Jones. Yeah, Jones three. and Hatter, it's the first three in a long time. They're very good three point shooters. Good rebound, good stop. Got to come down, get some points now. In and out by Case Bolt. They just can't get that critical no. shot to fall. They need to make a, you know, a five or seven zero run to close this gap and get back in it. They still got plenty of time. There's ten forty remaining in the game. Nice steal there. Nice steal. Nice steal by T. Jones, and he drew a foul, and he'll go to the line for two. It's gonna be a foul on uh, D. Roberts from Glen Oaks, that's his third. And, and T. Jones will go to the line for two shots. That's Glen Oaks, eight fouls, 18 fouls, and Muskegon has five. Boy, they're missing free throws. They missed a lot of free throws. Want to uh, say happy birthday to our uh, clock man, John Leonard, 57 years old today. Got his son in the place? Yes. Yes. He's going to be awful proud of him. I know he had a nice career at OV. Yes, he did. Those are the kids you like. They're, they work hard. They're good players, and they got a great attitude. Well, Glen Oaks is just too strong. Yeah. They, they just come in there and uh, kind of at will. And uh, Angelo Griffiths drove in, and he'll shoot two from the line as uh, Connor Bradley picked up his first foul. He'll go for two. The uh, MCC baseball and softball teams will be heading to Florida. Did Friday. You, uh, Myrtle to, Beach, not Myrtle Florida. Beach. Yeah. Okay. I'm leaving Friday, uh, Pat Gillian sitting, standing, not sitting next to me. So they leave Friday morning at 8 o'clock and okay. uh, play their first game Sunday. Okay. Taking 31 Jayhawks with it. So everybody will get a little 
spring practice. Hopefully the weather, it's usually in the 50s or 60s this time of year. Hopefully it'll be a little more. Well, Mr. Jim Moyes was telling me that uh, he's gonna try to catch a Grand Valley game and then they leave and come home and play a uh, home game March 6th. <laughs> yeah. yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> good luck with that. It, uh, I've it been was, to Grand Valley Baseball yeah. game. There's no way yeah. they have to bulldoze that snow off. We may we may get uh, cut your grass for the first time in yeah. July this year. Yeah. yeah, good luck. You know, baseball, their first game is like March 14th. Yeah. And, uh, and, of course, once it gets warm, the snow will go pretty quick. Yes. Yeah. I'll tell you what. It's been a brutal winter, and uh, you know the thing is with these colleges, they start so early and they end. Early. Yes, yes. They end and the grass hasn't even turned green yet; it's still brown. Yes. Jake makes first one and uh, try to cash in to cut the lead to seven if he can get it. Well, a uh, former Oak Ridge player, Jamie Potts. Uh, you could almost say he's All-American in two sports. I think he'll probably will be this year. Yes. Got one more year of football, and he had a great year. And, uh, played about three positions, and uh, I think he even punted at the end of this year. He didn't start out yes. that way, but he played split end, the tight end, and they also lined him up out of the backfield as a uh, pass receiver. They just felt that. Uh, Wherever he is, he can get open. Foul on T. Jones is first for the Jayhawks, and Jason Starks will go to the line for the Glen Oaks Vikings. 6'7", 205 freshman from Indianapolis who went to Decatur High School. He must have had the uh, transportation from Decatur to, uh, well, maybe Decatur, probably high school in Indianapolis. I shouldn't say that. Makes the first. And he's a big boy. Mm -hmm. Well, Jayhawks are within eight, Gene. They got to start yeah. getting back in this game. They're just they're not playing that great. They're just kind of hanging in there. Yeah. They hustle. They hustle. They hustle. Nice he, uh, He's just, I've said Hatter is such a great three-point shooter, but that's the first time he's been uncontested in the whole second half for a three-pointer. Jones has one. Boy, uh, Glen Oaks answers. Missed shot by Hatter again and rebounded by the Vikings. Nice move by Starks. Couldn't make it, get it to drop. Jayhawks are, you know, they're not out of the game. They're no. Still in it. They just got to get a little uh, momentum going here. There they go. Two pointer by T. Jones and a quick. Oh, look out. They, Somebody was napping, they're gonna go down and draw a foul. And number 12, Upshaw is gonna to go to the line for two. They gotta get back on defense yeah. and not make that foul. Problem is they're only two from 10, which would put uh, the Vikings at the free throw line for two shots every time every yeah. time for the rest of the game. And uh, you just, uh, it's, it's too difficult to deal with that. Especially if they start dropping free throws all the time. Yeah. They're just not gonna, they can't catch them when they're... They were perfect for for four the first uh, half, and they do make a high percentage. How would you describe the color of the free throw shooter's shoes, Mike? I'm colorblind, but they all look awful. <laughs> Yellow, purple, one of them. I'm not sure about the other one. I guess they're the same. It goes with the stripe in the uniform, I guess. Yes. I'm not sure. But that's Juco basketball. Yes, you never know, is. boy. And there's some great players that play this game in junior college. Jake, 
little razzle-dazzle here, and he threw it away, but they got lucky. The ball bounced in Stark's hands and missed it. That's that physical that's strength that, out of the basket. That's right. And uh, D. Roberts made a play and put it back yeah. in. See, they're now in a zone, but yeah. also the guards are out beyond the three. They don't want Hatter and Jones shooting. Three. Right, I think that's a good defensive yeah. move for yeah. uh, they probably won't make it. You're no. not as likely to make a foul, and yeah. they don't match up real well with them because Glen Oaks is a little bigger, so yeah. uh, they're going to make him force that, that corner shot, and he makes it. Nice shot by uh, Jake Anderson. Community College takes a quick timeout, and it's 70 to 63. Yeah. Seven points now. We're going to keep it here. With 7.12 to play, Ty Miller calling a timeout. 30-second timeout, so we'll get right back to action quickly. Did Ty Miller play with one of the Nelsons at Fremont? I kind of... Well, I don't know, but they had good teams then. Oh, gosh, yeah. He, uh, he was just an outstanding high school basketball player. Yeah. I don't think that uh, the baldness happened from rubbing against the rim, dunking the ball. No, well, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, the Community College League does a good job. The officiating here is really at a good level. Yeah, uh, it is. And you know what? They listen to the coaches. You know, they know them well and stuff. And they're not in. They're not arrogant. They're not trying to show off. They just call the game the best they can. Nice drive. Yeah. Nice drive by Jones. He just couldn't get yeah. it. Not getting enough points on possessions. If they're going to yeah. make up the seven-point deficit, we're down to 645, and there's oh, a nice drive. Nice sweeping layup. By big uh, Angelo Griffiths. Nice penetration. I thought he was going to bounce it off his knee. Yeah. They're just staying ahead of him, seven, yeah. nine, ten points. And uh, I don't think Jayhawks have been under seven here for much there's a nice drive by Hatter, lays it in. 5'8", 140, I think he's a player. He's, I've, uh, he's been fun to watch all season long. He's a gamer. Yeah, he works real hard, Jim. Not afraid to get knocked on his rear end. But you know what? And they answer. This uh, team answers every answer. time. D. Roberts nails on. Here's Hatter with a drive again. Another nice uh, shot. Uh, He's starting to take over the game on uh, for the Jayhawks uh, with his penetration. <laughs> penetration by uh, Gardner, and he drew a foul, so he'll go to the line. Very they difficult. Shoot one and one. Uh, like very difficult to stop the Vikings uh, in that power move without fouling them. They're right. just too big and strong. I believe he drove. He's going to get two, and that would be both teams will shoot two because each team will be in the double bonus on the next foul for either team. Makes the first, misses the second. Eight point lead for the Vikings with five minutes and 30 seconds remaining to be played. Trying to get a screen to get that three off. Just can't get that second shot. The Munich is not getting many second shots this whole second half. No. I want to tell the folks that next Wednesday, a week from the night, Jackson Community College will be in. It'll be the last home game of the regular season. And also, as you know, it is free admission here. There's not the cost to come and watch the game. And we encourage you to get out. It's a good atmosphere and a uh, little concession stand, nice uh, facility to watch a game in. And uh, if you can't, we'll be, uh, you can continue to watch us on TV. Jake Anderson just picked up his fifth foul for the Jayhawks. And as he fouls out, and Angela Griffiths goes to the line, he made the first, he's got the second. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jimmy Boots got him uh, talking to him. He's a little upset. He's such a competitor, and uh, 
Yeah. I guess I'd rather see that in him than someone that doesn't care. Well, you know what? He cares. And that's oh, yeah. There, Hatter, Hatter made another yeah. one. Hatter's having a good second half. He's trying to bring him back all by himself. It's still seven, though. Five minutes, 4.50 to go in the game. They're going to have to put somebody on Hatter here to yeah. shut him down. Yeah. Otherwise, he could single-handedly bring the Jayhawks yeah. back. Good defense. Ooh, nice good block. Defense. Nice block by Leonard. Very nice play. Hatter's coming back. He's going to fire again, mm -hmm. I think. He's got the feel. No. Nope. There we go. Chase Caseball makes a nice three. Yeah. Boy, that three-point shot just changes the yeah. game of basketball. We got a, we're got. we going to a timeout. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Don't go away, folks. 422 left in this ball game, and the Jayhawks have cut it down to four points. Vikings have possession. What's gonna happen the rest of the game, Mike, for the Jayhawks to take get a victory? Well, just continue what they've done the last couple of minutes. It, uh, certainly help. I gotta yeah. believe Glenn Oaks is gonna change defense on the next time yeah. down. They're, they they got to do something to slow Hatter down. And, uh, well, you know what they did is they took 14 and posted him low with Hatter guarding him, and uh, he was giving up uh, a tremendous amount of uh, height and weight. Like uh, right. three and four, seven uh, inches and uh, 65 pounds. That's Hatter's first foul, and Gardner yeah. goes the line. And boy, you know these these last uh, four minutes, four minutes exactly ago. These these last four minutes, everybody's getting two shots. You got to hit. You got to hit these free throws. Yes, yes. And he, he misses, misses both of them, so that will help. There he goes again, and he makes it. He Great is player. a player. He is a player. Well, I would have never given him much of a chance five, six, eight, ten minutes ago. And this Hatter, uh, Marquise has just taken over this game. He made a beautiful penetration drive, got the bucket, got one free throw. They can cut it to one now with a basket. We're going to have a Exciting 3.48 here remaining. We're going to have an exciting last four minutes here. And he makes the yep. free throw. One point down, 77-76. We got timeout, 3.46 to play. Let's keep it here. It's going to be a full timeout. Yep. Uh, Glen Oak's going to have to change something. They're going to have to do something with it. Uh, Marquise Hatter to... See if they can put a stop on him. 77, 76. I want to tell you that in the first game, uh, Rob Recknickel's uh, women's team won uh, over a very good uh, Oak Glen Oaks uh, Community College team and uh, gave him his 14th win of the year. And uh, why I get so excited about Rob is I just think he's an excellent teacher of the game. He got the job late where he didn't get much of a chance to recruit. And he's really moved these girls from a, up to a pla different plateau in terms of their skill, their execution, and also their confidence. And, uh, you know, like I said, chance uh, to win a few more games. You get in 15, 16 victories your first season. That's what you call a very successful season. Well, here we're ready to go, Gene Young. One point lead for the Vikings. They'll have the ball coming out of the timeout. Double bonus for both teams. And uh, we'll just see what happens here. Uh, I, I got to believe they're going to do something with Hatter. Yeah. They've got to put somebody on him to, to stop him. He's basically just taking over. Jayhawks in the man to man. There's going to be a foul yeah. on uh, Leonard. Nice drive by uh, 
I believe that's a 12 Upshaw. Leonard uh, just picked up his fifth foul, yeah, Mike. So we have the second Jayhawk fouling out. That's going to hurt him. Leonard's good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's going to hurt him. As uh, number 12 uh, Upshaw goes to the line and he'll shoot two. It's two players, two of their uh, bigger players. Yes. Anderson and Leonard, 6'4, well, Leonard, 6'1, that fouled out. Well, those are the type of kids, and they show it tonight. A loose ball, uh, hard defense, dive for the ball. Those kids do it. Upshaw made the first, 78-76. He'll get one more, and he makes that. So a three-point lead now for the Vikings. Let's see what they do on defense there. Match it up man-to-man, -man and uh, the quick guard, Upshaw's guarding Hatter now. Let's see what happens. He's going to take him to the hole and shoot. And he's, oh, he just missed it, but he drew the foul. Yeah. He's going on the line for two. I want to thank Rod uh, Van Norwick, the uh, head TV guy here, for lining up these excellent workers and uh, getting our camera crew and our technical uh, board and all the people that uh, bring this TV game to you. Had her miss the first, Gene. They need these. Yes. Cut it to two if he makes this. I don't think the uh, community has been very good at the free throw line no. in the second half. No, no. Well, they cut it to two, so they got uh, three minutes and five seconds. Mm -hmm. Get some stops. Ten on the shot clock. They're gonna do something here pretty quick. The big Griffiths with the ball in the crowd. Nice pass inside and pass. Oh, he almost walked. Oh, Jayhawk shot the ball. Oh, he hit the hit the basket on a rebound. They got a chance to tie it or go ahead. Oh, he got it to go ahead. Jayhawks just went ahead, 80 to 79. Hatter hit another three. I'll tell oh, you, is he, is he putting on a second half show, Mike oh, Mack? He sure is. 5'8, 140 pounds. Community College could have made a foul, so. We're going to go to the line for two more, Gene. I'll tell you what, the crowd came to their feet. They've been kind of sitting moping a little bit. They're into the game now. Good crowd, and. Uh, they're excited about the Jayhawks having a lead, 2.04 to play, but they got the... Uh, Angelo Griffiths is going to be shooting two. Yep, and... Uh, made the first, we get one more. As Kayvon Gardner enters the game for Quintel Upshaw. Another Kalamazoo Central player. Yeah, we got a tie game. You yeah. missed the second one, so we got 0-0 zero, zero tie with two minutes to go. Just don't force it, Jayhawks. Don't you? Get a good shot. Get a high percentage shot. Don't force it. This is the guy that's going to shoot it. Yeah. And they call the block. They can't guard him. I'll tell you what, yeah. they cannot no. guard him. He's so confident. Foul's going to be on Gardner. And he's going to, uh, or excuse yeah. me, T. Jones. That's his yeah. fourth. Yeah. And yeah. Hatter's going the line for two. Yep. You know, there's uh, plenty of games. Hatter had 20, 30 points and a half. And when he gets hot, he's just in, in, unstoppable. Got to get the free throws. Boy, this team was down by 14 at one time. And uh, I thought, oh, we're going to have a bad, ugly second half. Yeah. And nothing but... <laughs> ugly. It's been tremendous. Have to give Mr. Hatter a lot of credit for that. Sure do. He's had a dynamite second half. He makes them both. Now. now the Jayhawks are up by two with 150 left. Yeah. 
Get some help defense. Oh, oh July, my open. goodness. Jayhawks got lost on that one. Yep. And made an easy layup to tie it. There was a defensively. Uh, uh, Chase Caseball just somebody lost her man. I'm not uh, sure who it was. Yeah, he, he lost. I'm not going to say his name, but he lost him by six feet. When he got the ball, all he had to do was turn around and make a layup off the glass. So critical defensive error, but it's still only tied with uh, Muskegon having possession of the ball. Both teams in two shot fouls with 10 each, 10 fouls each. What a great comeback. What a great comeback. Great comeback. They yeah. were down, what, 14 at one time? Yep. And they got the tie game and they got the ball, so yep. things are good. Got to realize that uh, if you need uh, the 35 seconds to get a decent shot, you can take it. You don't have to just come down and fire it up. You want a high percentage shot, so you also want to some uh, players to go offensive fouls. Pat is just going to get it and drive to the basket if he can, but somebody else is going to have to make one. Got a new fresh 35. Yep. Hatter wants the ball. They're not. They're going to do everything they can not to give him the ball. Or get, <laughs> let him get the ball. He's, they got to help on him if he drives, which they did. Yeah. Ten seconds, ten seconds to shoot, nine. Oh, it's just fumbled it. Oh, fall on uh, uh, the Jayhawks, yeah. on T. Jones. It doesn't matter and if it's shooting or not. He gets no. two uh, shots anyway with a ten uh, foul limit. 45 seconds to play, 82-82. D. Roberts will go the line for two shots. So now we're going to have a free throw contest, Gene Young, probably mm -hmm. in the last 45 seconds, especially the team that's ahead. Well, he made the first one, so Glenn Oaks is gonna come back. There's a 10 second time differential. 45 seconds uh, to go and 35 in the shot clock. He made, oh! oh. Glenn Oaks gets a critical rebound, and they call a jump ball, but it's Glenn Oaks' ball. Yeah. He'll lose the rebound, and then the jump ball goes in possession to uh, uh, we got a timeout. Full timeout. We're back for the last 42.9 seconds. The ball is to the Vikings under their basket. And it's in play. Jayhawks are going to, there's a six second differential. They're probably trying not to foul, but they're going to have to shoot the ball, but okay. they still got 20 seconds to, uh, to do that. Kind of between a rock and a hard place. Mike foul. There he threw up a bad shot. Yeah. Yeah, now the Jayhawks got a chance to yeah. win it. 12 seconds with the ball. Hatter has the ball. The guy you want. And we got a timeout. Gee whiz. I think I'd get the ball to him and have everybody yeah. else sit down and let him yeah. go. Yeah. You know, I the momentum's there. You got nine seconds. I don't know. If I would have just let him uh, play out the nine seconds, you got him right where you want him with the ball, and uh, but uh, I'm sure they're going to set up some type of a screen or pick where they can free uh, Hatter for. You don't need a three; all you need is a two. Yeah, you're right. Two pointer, you're a winner. We've had two uh, exciting basketball games tonight. I don't. I can't believe they're going to. I mean, they're they're going to really defend Hatter, so yeah. they may not let him get the ball and somebody else is going to have yes. to uh, yeah. help out. You know, you look at Hatter that size, you say, you know, can he play uh, a higher division basketball? He's awfully talented. He's awfully quick. Yeah, he's quick and he's talented. He's, he's just small. That's his only problem. Yeah. So he's, uh, he's a player. He's had a great game tonight, especially he's had a great second half. Yeah, you know, that first half, uh, I got to give credit. I think the defense uh, held him down. And uh, second half, he's worked a little harder. His teammates have worked a little harder to get him open. So expect to see Mr. Hatter show. And if they double team him, I'm sure he's smart enough and aware enough to look for that open man. 
believe the Jayhawks are out of timeouts. I'm not sure about Glen Oaks. Oh, they just took a timeout, so they obviously yeah. got at least one of them. It's a 30 second timeout. So there's a little pause in the action, Gene Young, for 20 some more seconds, and uh, I'm sure Glen Oaks is trying to put together a plan, as is uh, Community College, to see uh, what they're going to do here in the last 10 seconds. And uh, there's no question that uh, they would like to get the ball to McQuise mm -hmm. Hatter from West Ottawa. Nice player. See if he can uh, make something happen. I gotta believe they're gonna clear a side out for him. Yeah. 9.4 seconds. And well, the, right now it looks like they may try to deny him to receive the ball, yeah. which I think is a smart move. Just yeah, uh, well, he still don't got foul, it. Just don't foul him. Just get out of his way now. Let him, uh, they tried to set a There's, screen. Yeah. Oh, they might get a good shot here. Oh! <laughs> the buzzer. <laughs> oh man. Oh. Takes case ball. What a great, what a great victory. What an absolutely great victory, ladies and gentlemen. Chase what a great case victory. Ball. Chase case ball for Montague yeah. made that basket. Yeah. Great uh, shot. Yeah. Uh, what a, what a nice win for the Jayhawks. Yeah. Yeah. Hatter couldn't get it off and uh, Chase Hayes they beat it, it up 20. with it. They they gave uh, they beat a 20 and three team. They beat a team that's 11 and one in the conference, and I'm sure has some type yep. of a national rank. What a great win for the Jayhawks. Yep. What and, a oh, what a win. nice play. Well, that make Chase yep. sleep well tonight. He got in after uh, Jayhawk fouled out, yeah. and uh, boy, he just yeah. uh, he's the hero of the game. Yeah. And uh, Jayhawks are smiling much. That was a great. Uh, well. Great game. Uh, Two victories tonight, the women and the men, and uh, we'll be back next Wednesday, 5.30 for the women's game, 7.30 for the men's game, Jackson Community College. For Mike Mack, I want, this is Gene Young. Good night, everybody.